Hi everyone, what you're about to see tonight are a couple of clips taken from my first stream this past week. I streamed for over 10 hours this past week and I wanted to make some sort of highlight reel of the more memorable moments from those streams because I know it's just hard to wade through hours and hours of footage if you're a viewer. But as I was going through the first stream, I noticed there was a really good opportunity to fact check OpenAI's O1 preview and O1 minis uh, results after the fact, because if you watch those streams, you'll notice that sometimes I'm flustered. I don't really see how it comes to certain conclusions and it lays out a bunch of steps. And so I went back and I redid some of those problems that I gave it just to sort of see and remember how to do them and also follow open AI's O1 models um, chain of reasoning, right? And just sort of see how it got to certain steps and why it stated certain things. And I actually learned some uh, very interesting things after the fact. Spoiler alert, I actually got something wrong and it did correct me. So that is that is kind of uh, interesting and surprising. And I wanted to uh, state that it is gonna be a little bit of a, a while before I can roll out all of this uh, content just because I am a one man show behind the scenes to do all the editing and uploading and stuff. And so if I'm going down these, these loose ends and trying to verify its solutions through those 10 hours of footage, it's going to, it's going to be a while. So I appreciate your patience with me. I hope this can hold you over as I work through the rest of the clips. I do hope to put some sort of compilation together at some point, but uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and start with the clips and then I'll sort of interject myself after uh, those clips are uh, done. Like these two are like two graduate level astrophysics textbooks. Pretty confident solution manual, solution manual, sorry, but this book does not exist. I love solving problems. I have these solutions that I've written to um, some, not all, not the entirety of the book, but um, decent amount of problems from some of the books right in front of me. And so these are my own, you know, handwritten solutions. I on my website, I actually have posted the first two problems to this book. First problem here. Okay. All right. So this doesn't look like this doesn't look good. What? <gasps> really? 19.55 mags per sec. I don't think that's correct. What if I just give chat GPT four row this question? I'm curious. Will it get what I get? Or will you get something else? 18.05. Okay, now now definitely somebody is somebody. Somebody gonna get a hurt real bad. Somebody is doing something wrong here. Numbers like magnitudes, like half a magnitude makes a difference in terms of rightness in astronomy. This book does not have its own solution manual. So I've actually reached out to the um, author himself for this book. And I asked him about like, oh, you know, can you help me with a problem? And he, 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 he said he, you know, he has to dredge up memories, but you know, I think you can do this. So I'm pretty confident that this book doesn't have a solution manual. Um, this is my solution below and it disagrees with your solution. Can you read through it and verify who is actually correct? Question mark. All right. Approach. However, recalculating by subtracting the clusters flux is more accurate. Your approach, current, correct approach, original solution on oh, your calculation. Okay, so you assume that the bulge's flux is part of the total flux and added it to the cluster's flux, which leads to a brighter total magnitude given. This contradicts the problem statement where the total flux, oh, am I really incorrect? Since the total flux is measured and includes both the bulge and the cluster, we need to subtract the cluster's flux. This is, this is, this is interesting. We've gotten a disagreement here. First disagreement, it's saying that I'm wrong. I, I challenged it. It's saying, nope, you shouldn't have done that. I'm going to stand corrected on this one. I mean, it seems pretty confident. Indeed, I stand corrected because I went back to the original problem, which is 2.1 right here. And I realized after reading it again that I misinterpreted it the first time I ever solved this problem. And the reason that happened is because I was reading an earlier section of this chapter right here, which goes through an example of how to do these kinds of calculations because ast astronomical units are kind of weird and they're funny and you have to deal with logarithms and the math is just a little bit um, not intuitive. And so I went back and did the example just so I could verify I was following everything correctly. 
And then when I realized that I was doing the problem wrong originally, I went back and redid 2.1, ended up getting this answer, 19.55, which indeed was the correct answer that ChatGPT told me at the on its first attempt. So very interesting that uh, it was right. And then it told me about the discrepancy because I asked it, uh, you know, where did I go wrong exactly? And it did uh, correctly tell me where I went wrong because I, I didn't do the, the addition correctly. So that one uh, was uh, my bad. And I'm really impressed, honestly, now that I'm looking back on it. That's really cool that I was able to sort of go through all these steps. And uh, like I mentioned, there's no actual solution manual to this book. So it's interesting how, uh, you know, ChatGPT01 uh, preview and mini and its future successors you know, could t potentially be uh, changing the way we learn things, right? I, I, <laughs> I'm already like really impressed with it. So um, just wanted to set the record straight on that one. Um, let's give it the second problem, actually. This one, I know this is the answer because it even says so in the book, like this is actually the answer that the book says. So we're gonna get to see, unless it's gonna be like the book is wrong and we're gonna go dump it in. So this is the same kind of problem. So hopefully it won't get too confused. Calculate log 10 of four by 2026. Wait, really? You need to use the fact that it's 5.48. Hang on, something doesn't feel right. Indeed, something wasn't quite right here. And the thing that kind of set me off with this is that nowhere really in the problem does it make use of this fact except at the very end, but it just kind of stuffs it in in a way that it kind of just knew it had to go for this. And so it like reiterated this fact. And if I'm gonna go down here and show it, it does this thing that's kind of funny to me. It's kind of omitting some steps here because it gets to this point, I'm sorry, I'm moving around here, but it gets to this point where the final expression, you're trying to get this mu b thing. And it doesn't really calculate all this out. Uh, in the sense that it leaves this sort of unknown variable ZP, which stands for zero point. Uh, it, it calculates this middle term right here, which ends up being 29.32. I actually did verify that at some point, like right here, that is correct, that it did that calculation correct, which it did. But it doesn't really properly determine this unknown factor here. It's interesting because it goes through all these steps to solve for the zero point. But it says, but since we're dealing with surface brightness per unit error and the sun's luminosity per unit error is this over one squared parsec, we can approximate ZP directly. And so it gains this expression and then kind of just doubles back on itself and says, well, there's this expression here that is a standard value, which it just kind of pulls out of a hat. It kind of just, it doesn't show me where it got that. And that's how it sort of gets the quote unquote right answer at the end. It does get the right expression but it uses this fun fact that it never really derived. It just sort of says, this is a standard thing. And going back to my, my own work here, what's interesting when I looked back at my own derivation is that I'm able to actually, uh, where is it? I'm able to actually get that value out of all of the math that I'm doing. So I'm able to just get this, right? 21.572 falls out of doing the all the the algebra and the logarithms and simplifying so i am able to get this expression and then able to substitute this value in whereas o1's model does not do that even though in principle it started from a place that should have been able to get the same answer i mean there's multiple ways to go about doing this problem and so i'm not faulting it for not following my approach but it just doesn't justify the the pulling out of this value when it went down on this other path. And so I found that very interesting. And even more interesting was that when I actually followed its steps, I actually wrote down its steps to follow its train of logic. And I got to this point here. If I pull this up, let me zoom in here. So as you can see here, I get to this point where it just has this unknown zero point and if you go through the steps, you calculate this thing out here, you have the zero point expression, 
And sorry, I made a few mistakes here and there. The point being, though, is that if it actually evaluated this, because this is the known value of 5.48, and you do the calculation here with this um, log term and its expression, you do end up getting something that is somewhat close to the final answer, not quite 27.03 versus 27.05. Um, but the thing is, is that it didn't follow through with the step. It ended up just double backing on itself. And what uh, I find interesting is that it, it could have effectively gotten rid of this term because if you're assuming this is just one solar luminosity based on the units we were defining here, this should just be essentially taking log of one and log of one is equal to zero. So in a way, if it just continued with the logic that it it was uh, doing from this step, it could have gotten something fairly close to the final answer. It wouldn't have been completely correct. It would have been 27.03, but it just, like I said, inserted this term out of the blue. And so I find that very interesting, maybe concerning in the sense that it's subtle how it is sort of um, BSing its way to the final answer. Cause this really is kind of how I think like if you're a you know competent student, but maybe you can't really get the known result, you just try and like, you know, reverse engineer the solution to get the final uh, result to sort of just satisfy the, uh, you know, the answer, because we knew what the answer was supposed to be. So uh, I find that very um, interesting and uh, something that I need to keep in mind moving forward if we give it problems where we explicitly state what the answer is, because it could just pull a sleight of hand like that. And uh, I think that's all I'll say on this question, but uh, very, very, very interesting. So I think that's all I have time for tonight. I hope you found this fairly interesting. I know I did because uh, it was cool to see how these models can get to a correct answer when it's not explicitly stated. But when you do state what the answer is, it can try and pull some sort of sleight of hand maneuver to make sure it satisfies the constraints of the problem, which I'm sure is something that people who study safe AI safety and cybersecurity are, are, are probably aware about, but it, it's cool to see sort of in real time how it just wants to make sure it gets the right answer. But if it, if it makes a mistake somewhere, it, it kind of is like, well, I did all this work and now I'm just gonna, just gonna pull in this other thing out of nowhere just so we can get the final answer in the end. So um, yeah, I hope you found this uh, interesting. Like I said, I'd love to be able to do more fact checking, but it's going to take some time. Obviously, this isn't done instantaneously. It's, uh, it requires some time and thought, and I found it very refreshing to do some astronomy again because it's been a while. So I hope you'll come back, and uh, I hope you have a great night, and I'll hope to see you in a future video.